And we just spent seven to maybe eight hours in the car. But we finally made it to our destination, the good old Salamander Capital, Tennessee. Now, it's our first night here. It's a little dark, so we don't have a lot of time. But I'm just, I was so anxious after sitting in the car for so long. You're, you guys are going to enjoy the first flip of the rock here for us. Now, since I said it's a little dark, I got my flashlight, so red, blue, purple, what? There we go. All right, so we're going to flip this, my first rock here in Tennessee. Let's see if we find anything at all. Oh, we got somebody. All right. All right. What do we got here? We have a black-bellied salamander. Oh, there he goes. Oh, he's right there. This is a black belly salamander. Now they're very similar to what I have back at home, which is the Northern Dusky. First salamander in the truck. Pretty excited about that. So we're gonna see if we can find anything else in the short amount of time we have here tonight. So we're still on our hunt for salamanders. And one particular salamander that we wanted to see on our Tennessee adventure was this little guy I have in my hand right here. Now this is an imitator salamander. What makes these guys cool is they imitate the uh, red cheek salamander. But unlike the red cheek salamander, this is actually a type of dusky salamander. Now what's strange about that is duskies are usually found in creeks, streams, under rocks, you know, anywhere in, in a water environment. However, this guy here has adapted really well to the land. We've made our way to some of the higher elevations here in the mountains. And one salamander that's particular at these high elevations is the Southern Appalachian Salamander. Now these guys, they look very similar to the slimy salamander in almost every way, except the slimy salamanders, they, they're, they have a lot bigger white spots on their bodies. And these guys, they're very faint, just like throughout their whole body. It just seems as if it's just tiny little white specks. These guys, they're, they're slime. They'll stick your hands together like like nothing else it, it's pretty gross so we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just put him down before he does that and there he goes even though we came out here to find salamanders the weather's just been so nice and we've been hiking all over the place so of course we came across a few snakes now this here is a garter snake it's not a species that's too terribly rare to see but we still really enjoy seeing it and we even stopped to take a couple pictures so while we were out on our hike today we could clearly hear a large stream off in the distance, so we decided, obviously, to go up and look at it. And we decided to check out one of the smaller streams, which is what we're actually at right now. It's a runoff stream from the bigger stream, which is actually really cool because we found a black-bellied salamander and a shovel nose in the same habitat. They do like to share the same habitat, and that's one of the reasons why they're easily confused, especially because the shovel nose, they also have the black belly. But the shovel nose, unlike the black belly, their eyes sit on top of their head. So they're a little funny looking, their, their snout isn't as long, their, their face isn't real long, it, their, their nose kind of goes downward a little bit. And luckily have it, we actually found two with the salamanders, the shovel nose and the black belly, relatively the same size, in the same spot. But I don't want to keep these guys out of the water too long, especially the shovel nose, because they're, they're mainly, they're a lot more aquatic than the normal old, old duskies. So we're gonna go ahead and just let them go. Well, it seems our salamander hunt out here in Tennessee is actually starting to come to a close. We still have a lot of time left, but we've, we're starting to find pretty much everything we've wanted to find out here. Now, as Siobhan mentioned earlier, we found the imitator, and they imitate the red cheek. Now, we actually found the red cheek, which is one of the other ones we came out here to see. This guy here, this is the red cheek salamander. Now, they get a lot bigger than the imitator, it's a different species. It's not a dusky. These salamanders are highly terrestrial. They live in, in higher elevations in the mountains. And just like every, any other plethodon, they, they do secrete a sticky substance, a, a poisonous substance. So if you were a predator, taking a bite out of them would just be, it, it would make your day awful. Now, I don't want to handle this guy too much because I don't want him to secrete everywhere and, and get my hands all nasty and sticky like they like to do. So I'm just going to let him crawl around. All right, it's our second night here in Tennessee. It's getting a little dark. We've had a pretty good day of herping so far. We've found a lot of salamanders. We've probably seen some of them already. Um, but not only when we go out, not only do we find a lot of herps, we also see a lot of mammals. We don't tend to record a lot of them because some of them, they're you know, fairly average. They scamper off real fast. But behind me in this tree is a black bear. Now, if you can 
go up there and see him. And we walked up on this guy and he ran up in that tree as fast as he could just to get out of our way. And he's content up there, just chowing down on some brush and some leaves. And you can see, he feels completely safe up in that tree. And if he was down on the ground, we'd be 10, 15 feet away from him. And it's just, it's pretty amazing that we can get that close to something that big.